Hello everyone, welcome. Today I'll talk about leukemia. And the way that I'm going to talk about is first I'm going to present a case in very brief. I'll ask you the diagnosis and then I'll explain why this diagnosis was made or how the diagnosis was made. So this is our first patient. She looks very ill. She has multiple bleeding spots in her body especially in the legs you can see the thighs and legs and also the calms and she had pallor one additional finding was she had high grade fever with cough and when we examined the patient we had found the patient had bony tenderness hepatosplenomegaly and then we draw blood from the patient it showed a decrease in RBCs a decrease in platelets so those are the RBCs all of those are RBCs which are actually decreasing number and the platelets are also very few and there's very large cells in the blood film and when we did the bone marrow we also found some large very large cells involving the bone marrow so can you tell me the diagnosis very good the diagnosis is acute myeloid leukemia if we want to be very specific it's actually the acute myeloid leukemia Promyelocytic variety and also called M3 variety. So let us just explain everything that I have already talked about. So suppose you see the patient. This patient looks very ill. All the patients with leukemia looks very ill. They are actually also toxic. And the patient has bleeding under her skin. Bleeding under skin actually uh, is due to uh, decreased platelet count in the patient's blood which occurs due to decreased myocarpoiasis. And the explanation should be, in case of leukemia, there is excessive proliferation of the blood cells. So those blood cells overpopulate the other germlines, which are uh, RBC series and platelet series. So erythropoiesis and myocarpoiasis are depressed, leading to decreased platelet count in the blood, leading to purpura or pitechiacamosis, and decreased RBC in the blood leading to pallor and also have already said that the patient had bony tenderness. Bony tenderness occurs due to excessive proliferation of the blast leading to increased pressure in the bone ultimately which presses the periosteum causing bony tenderness and there is also hyperosplenomegaly and this can be caused as a reactive change due to uh, there as there is decreased RBC in the blood the, w, uh, the spleen and liver starts to produce more RBCs so they act as a site of extra marrow erythropoiesis and also sometimes the leukemic cell can themselves infiltrate the liver and spleen leading to a hepatosplenomegaly okay so those should be the explanations and now we have the PPF which actually uh, shows the things that we have already discussed a decreased level of RBC decreased platelets and also some very bizarre big cells so those cells are actually myeloblasts as you can see myeloblasts have a big nucleus with multiple nucleoli the white areas actually represent the nucleoli so here is one 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 big one one so those are the nucleoli and they have multiple nuclei and one very important thing which actually helped us or guided us to get a diagnosis of uh, leukemia, uh, myeloid leukemia, especially the promyelocytic variety, is this rod-like structure. So you can see this is a rod-like structure which is called our rod, very specific for myeloblast. And those our rods are actually aggregates of myeloperoxidase, and those can actually uh, um, those can actually help us to diagnose better. And uh, bone marrow also so showed the same thing that those cells are present in a very high number reducing the number of uh, other li cell lines such as WBC, uh, the RBC and platelet lines and actually uh, if we want to uh, know the diagnostic criteria of leukemia that should be more than 20% of blood cells in the peripheral blood film and also in the bone marrow okay let's go to the next case so this is Vlad who presented with cough and chest pain and the doctor uh, did a chest x-ray and found a 
mass in the chest, chest especially medial stenum and we did a uh, bone marrow the bone marrow uh, we did a pl uh, pbf after drawing blood and this pbf showed the rbc counts are decreased you can't see any platelets maybe platelets are also decreased and there are some very big looking cells with very blue or purple nucleus and very little cytoplasm okay let's move on and uh, after doing bone marrow the bone marrow showed same type of cells which invades the bone marrow okay so can you tell me the diagnosis very good so vlad actually has acute lymphoblastic leukemia so let's explain that first of all acute leuke lymphoblastic leukemia uh, can have all the presentations that acute myeloid leukemia has so vlad actually also had some other features like vlad had fever vlad had pityki and blood had uh, fever i didn't mention that uh, and now i'm mentioning the, all the features are same but the, some special things can happen in acute lymphoblastic leukemia which is different from myeloblastic is it can actually involve the extra marrow sites such as your thymus so thymus is a site for maturation of lymphocytes so it's, it's very easy to remember that thymus can be involved in case of acute lymphoblastic leukemia and uh, which actually is seen in this picture that this thymus is, is getting very big in this patient and also those patients can have involvement of testes and involvement of the meningitis so this is something very special of uh, special about acute lymphoblastic leukemia next uh, i have shown you the blood film and this blood film has a decrease in rbc decrease in platelets and some very big cells so those very big cells are lymphoblasts so those lymphoblasts has big purple uh, nucleus which is actually uh, very big and very deep staining and uh, which uh, tell us that this nucleus has a lot of uh, dna material inside it and also the cytoplasm is very little very little there is no granules uh, such as such which can be seen in myeloblasts or something like that there is no hour rod so those should be the differences, basic differences between myeloblasts and lymphoblasts. So if we actually uh, again discuss about that, myeloblasts have a larger cytoplasm, okay? Myeloblasts can have hour rod, and myeloblasts have multiple nuclei, which can, which is uh, very conspicuous. But and uh, in in comparison, the lymphoblast has a small cytoplasm, a big nucleus but a little amount of little number of nucleolus which are actually not very conspicuous or you can see them easily and also they don't have any granules they don't have any hour runs okay those should be the basic differences between myeloblast and lymphoblast and the bone marrow also sh showed a lot of lymphoblast which actually suppresses the production of rbcs and platelets and the diagnostic criteria are the almost the same so just uh, the lymphoblast should be more than 20% in PBF and also more than 20% in bone marrow. So that's all about acute lymphoblastic leukemia, uh, the basics. And sometimes uh, some advanced things can also be known. It's interesting to know. So I have put one slide for that. So as you can see, this is a sometimes uh, this can be a bit cumbersome to understand. But just remember that. But just remember that uh, this this slide shows some cell surface markers. So uh, as you can remember from immunology, that sometimes your T cells, especially your T cells, have some surface molecules, uh, some CD molecules, CD4 T cell, CD8 T cells. And remember that B cells also can have some surface molecules. And I'm actually put this slide to show you that B cells can have CD19, CD10, and CD20. So remember that, very important to know, CD10, 20 and CD19 are the surface molecule that can be present on the surface of a B cell. So it can actually, uh, it actually tells us one more thing that the ALL can be two types, B cell variety and T cell variety. B cell is better, B for better. B cell variety has better prognosis and T cell variety has a poor prognosis. So if you want to differentiate between a B cell variety and T cell variety, you can't actually differentiate from a blood film 
or bone marrow. You have to do something called immunophenotyping or flow cytometry. So those are findings of flow cytometry. We actually have a machine of flow cytometry in DMC hematology department. And by those, we can actually assess the surface molecules that are present in the surface of lymphoblast. And we can actually differentiate if it is a B lymphocyte or T lymphocyte, though they look similar on PBF and bone marrow. So those are the B lymphocyte markers. And I put another uh, slide to show you the T lymphocyte markers. So T lymphocyte markers should be CD3 and CD7 and sometimes CD5 also. Okay, so remember those. And next, let's move on to another case. This is a patient who actually presented with splenomegaly. So it was his, heart, his main complaint and also some exertional dyspnea and fatigue and a newly developed pallor. And then we draw blood from this patient and actually found that his blood contained a lot of cells which are big, looks like neutrophil and also some primitive cells. And RBCs are not that depressed. We can see a lot of platelets here, 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 here. Okay. So uh, then we did the bone marrow and also see some big cells occupying the bone marrow. Uh, so can you tell me what's the diagnosis of this patient? Very good. This patient had acute sorry this patient had chronic myeloid leukemia so let's just explain everything so first of all chronic myeloid leukemia occurs in an older patient such as this this patient and as you have seen the acute leukemias are actually present in younger patients as the previous two cases so the uh, older patient which pre hope presents with splenomegaly and pallor is a typical case for cml and we can confirm it by pbf and bone marrow so in PBF, it shows that there are presence of mature or semi-mature cells in the bone marrow, uh, in the uh, PBF, such as uh, those are neutrophils, a lot of neutrophils, and there are some other cells which are not blasts, which are actually uh, metamelocytes and band forms, okay? So, uh, so the, there is no blast. So there is presence of multiple forms which are actually not blasts, Supp suppose myelocyte, metamelocyte and band forms so those are actually uh, those cells and they actually tell us that this is a case of chronic myeloid leukemia and then we also did bone marrow which also shows some uh, semi-mature cell uh, which actually yeah, involves the bone marrow okay so there are those are some semi-mature cells which are not blast but just just after blast not fully mature but in the middle so those are the cells of the chronic myeloid leukemia okay uh, next is let's see something called filan chromosome some of you may have heard it already or some of you may haven't so philadelphia chromosome is a very important also very hallmark for chronic myeloid leukemia it's the basic molecular reason behind developing chronic myeloid leukemia so as you can see we have two chromosomes here in this side and two chromosomes in this side so those two chromosomes are from a normal person and those two chromosomes are from a patient with CML or chronic myeloid leukemia. So you can see here two chromosomes, one is 9, the longer one, yeah, one other is 22, shorter one. And there are some segments which are actually labeled here, one is BCL present in 22, one is ABL present in 9. And in case of a Philadelphia chromosome formation, the actu actually from ninth chromosome the ABL portion gets out and actually it combines with the BCL portion of the 22nd chromosome and there is exchange of some other materials so you can see this this is the orange one this is the blue one and this orange one will go this orange one will go instead of the blue one and the blue one will come in the location of the orange one so this is a there is formation of a hybrid gene which is called BCL ABL fusion gene and the chromosome that newly forms the mutated chromosome or translocated chromosome you may also say that uh, is called a Philadelphia chromosome which was actually discovered in Philadelphia okay so actually this hybrid gene uh, forms a protein which has tyrosine kinase activity which is as you know tyrosine kinase receptors are associated with a lot of uh, growth and so those patients have excessive growth of their uh, WBCs leading to CML 
and actually the, we treat the CML with a drug, specific drug, which actually inhibits the tyrosine kinase. The most common drug is imatinib. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide. I hope you understood everything. So this is also an older patient who present with generalized lymph nodopathy. So you have, you can see their submental lymph nodes, some mandibular, then some anterior chains, anterior chains also, and some supraclavicular lymph nodes here also. So this patient present with lymph nodes, and also you can see there are big axillary lymph nodes. Okay, so generalized lymph nodopathy. Then we did a uh, PPF, and we have found that there are some nice cells, nice rounded cells which looks a bit mature okay next uh, we did another film from another pa uh, this patient and this showed some cells are broken down which are actually called smart cells so the cells are broken down in pieces you can actually differentiate what the nucleus or the cytoplasm are in here so those are smart cells and we did a bone marrow and this showed an ex uh, population of abnormal uh, cells which are dark staining which have a dark stain in the nucleus and which are large. So the diagnosis should be very good chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Why is this? First of all, chronic leukemia patients are older. So this is a patient, patient of chronic leukemia. So it's an older patient. Next, it involves the lymph node. So this should first guide us to a lymphocytic variant. As the ALL, which involve time, which can, which can involve thymus, the CLL can involve lymph nodes. So that's very basic differences between CML and CLL. Okay, CML can also involve lymph node, but uh, CLL is more likely to do that, and the patient is older. Next, we did a uh, PBF, which showed some mature lymphocytes, actually which are increased in number. Okay, so it's a uh, PBF showing a lot of lymphocytes which are mature. And then we see a uh, same uh, same type of picture in another PBF, which is showing some lymphocytes. One is two, one, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and some smart cells. Smart cells are very characteristic of chronic lymphoid leukemia or chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Okay, and bone marrow showed uh, infiltration of the bone marrow with uh, lymphoid pre precursors. Okay, so those are the findings of chronic lymphocytic leukemia here is an interesting picture and uh, this picture shows some abnormal blast type of cell uh, which has actually some uh, irregular membranes or irregular cytoplasm as you can see uh, this cytoplasm looks like a bit spiky so spike here one spike here one spike here here one spike here so like um, someone do spike in their hair so they actually looks like hairy projections and this is actually a slide of hairy cell leukemia. I just showed it for just interest purpose. So that should be all from me. And thanks for watching my presentation. Stay tuned for more.